now it is time to knit the button bands on my jacket. I will begin with the, uh, the button band that will have the buttons on it and not the buttonholes. And uh, the first thing I do is that I take my stitches and I transfer them from the stitch holder and onto a needle. And I use the same size of knitting needle that I used on the rest of my ribbing. And I will just place them all here on my needle and in on my jacket it should be nine stitches which I have here and how many stitches will be stated in your pattern so uh, next step I will take my second knitting needle and I will cast on for the lining because I will have a similar lining um, covering the cutting edge here as I made for the sleeves and um, I begin by casting on a few stitches I have chosen the number 8 I think that will be enough to cover oh, wrong end. I think that will be enough to cover the line uh, cover the cutting edge nicely and um, without being too wide or too narrow. Let's see, two, four, six, seven, eight, and I'm ready to begin. So I now have my stitches for the lining and my working yarn. And here I have the ribbing, and I will now connect the two by just continuing to knit this ribbing, and I will knit over knit stitches and I will purl over purl stitches and first I will just continue like this throughout the row like this and when I get to the end here I will just turn around and I will knit back. I slip the first stitch and when I do I am careful not to have my yarn here on this side because then I will pull the purl side of the stitch around and this edge will look bumpy and uneven. So I place my yarn over here and then when I slip the first stitch my yarn will be placed between the first and the second stitch like this. And I continue to knit over the knit stitches and purl the purl stitches as I make the ribbing here and when I have done the nine rib stitches I get to my newly cast on stitches for the lining and then I check I look at the purl side of my work and when I do I will knit 
the lining because when it covers the cutting edge the purl stitches will be concealed inside along with the cutting edge and I will see the knit stitches. So I will knit these stitches first needle is a bit slow to knit when I use this cast on so just need to be a bit careful make sure I get all the yarn okay so now I'm finished with this needle and I turn again now I look at the knit side which means I will purl back again when I slip instead of pulling my yarn this way I place it over and slip so that my yarn end up between first and second stitch and now I purl the first stitches and when I arrive at the ribbing I continue to knit the knit one purl one ribbing and I will continue back and forward like this until I until my um, button band almost reaches the neck opening and when it does I will get back to you with how to do the next step now I have knitted my button band until it almost reaches the beginning here of the neck hole but you can see that I have a little bit to go and the reason why I have stopped before I reached the top is because this will stretch uh, it will do so because it is ribbing and because it will carry buttons and it will be handled a lot both when taking the jacket on and off and when wearing the jacket it will be pulled on by the buttonholes so um, uh, and when it stretches it will make the jacket sag a bit here in the front or cause uh, like waves like this which I don't want so I'm going to do uh, do the stretching myself before attaching it so I simply pull it and then you can see immediately it reaches all the way to the neck hole the neck opening so having that done it's time to attach it and when I do you can see here I have the lining that will cover my cutting edge and this will go on the wrong side so I will turn so that you can see down here I fold the button band over the edge of the front opening like this and then I can find safety pins would be good I have a spare needle I have some double pointed needles like this 
and the reason why I secure it is just to be able to keep track when I stitch uh, stitch the button band to the jacket that I I stitch equally on each side so that I don't pull the button band too much or pull the jacket too much to make it look um, to make it look uneven. So when I stitch I will find a thread down here. If I don't have any I will attach one and find a needle and um, I begin here at the bottom of my pattern where the um, ribbing ends and I fold the cutting edge down and I see here I have my machine seam and my machine seam it runs between the last knit stitch and the first purl stitch here um, and to avoid unnecessary wear and tear on the machine seam itself I go one stitch to the side so I will use the space between the first and the second stitch after my machine seam. So I will stitch here and along the button band I will stitch here right in between the ribbing and the purl stitches on the lining. So I'll begin just, I have to get over here with my needle and to gather this and make it look good I have to even though I should stay on this side here I have to just pick up one stitch and then I move along just a little bit like this and then I will see here where my yarn comes from and it comes up here so I will go back there and stick my needle down again move a little bit up along the path I have chosen between these two stitches and when I go over to the other side again I see here my yarn comes from there so I stick it down the same place I move along a little bit up again then over to the front piece down where my yarn comes up and I move along and I continue this way all the way to the top and every now and then I stop and just organize my work a little bit and I pull to tighten my stitches and then I can see how it looks and then I continue and I also check how does it look when it comes to my markers here if I have the about the same tension on the front piece and the button band I'm good and I can correct uh, if I have too much fabric here and too little here I can correct it to some point by making when I go over here I can make a longer stitch because then I will use more fabric on this side and I can take a very short stitch here to use less and then the button band can catch up with the front piece otherwise you have to go back and start over but now I'm going to stitch this to all the way to the top 
and when I have done that, I will get back to you with the next step. I have now attached the button band from bottom to top and I think it looks okay. If I turn to the wrong side, this is how it looks for now. Here you can see the lining that I will I will trim this because there are so many long yarn ends on my cutting edge so I will trim that and then I will fold the lining over it and attach when I finish. But before I do I will have to decide where I place my buttons. I have already attached the first button, button as I already had one buttonhole down here. So I have just placed that one in the same height as the buttonhole. And to find out where to place the other buttons I know I want to have five buttons here and then I measure from the middle of this button because in the middle that is where I attach it. You can see here that it has this eye in the middle underneath and I measure almost to the top here because that is where I would like to place my last button and I can see it's 30 centimeters and when I if I need uh, five buttons I have one in each end and three in the middle which makes four spaces between the buttons if I place one button here that is a space between the buttons so I have to divide 30 by 4 which makes seven and a half so there seven and a half I place one button there next is next is 15 22 and a half and 30 and I can see that this is a good this is a good match the distance looks even and it is quite suitable to use five buttons with this distance between. So what I will do is to attach these four buttons as well and then I will get back to you with the next step. All my buttons are now attached and um, the next step is to knit the second button band and um, this will be the one with all the buttonholes and uh, what I do I have started the button band here and um, I have done it in the exact same way as I did on this side it's an exact repetition uh, and next step for me now is to find out where to put my second buttonhole and I usually use two methods to to decide and one is that I count how many rows between my buttons and then I, I need to uh, keep in the back of my head that I use two rows to make a buttonhole so I can make sure I have about the same number of rows on this side. The second is that I I button this down here and I make sure that the ribbing on this side and this side uh, lies nicely towards one another and then I make sure that this lay, lay flat and then and that the button band fits in underneath the button just 
try and see if everything lies flat and looks okay. And when I'm happy, I can make another buttonhole. And what I do is that I I begin to knit now from from the ribbing here. If I go from this end, I knit until I have four stitches on my right needle. If I started in this end, I would knit until I had seven stitches left because I use three stitches for the buttonhole. And how many stitches you need will depend on the pattern you are following. Anyway, now I'm ready to begin my buttonhole and I will begin by casting off three stitches. So I knit two stitches and slip the first over the second. Now that I have cast off one stitch, then I knit one more. Cast off one more, cast off. That's three stitches, and you can see here I have a gap. So now I continue throughout this needle, uh, this row, and um, on my way back, when I turn and begin to knit the other way, I will complete the buttonhole. So I will just knit my way to where the buttonhole begins. here and then I'll just turn my needle and cast on one two three new stitches to replace the ones I cast off and then I can continue to knit to complete the row and um, there you can see the buttonhole. This will even out when I go back the other way and pull on the yarn. So now I can continue to the next buttonhole and the next buttonhole and when my second button band also reaches the top here where my neck opening begins. I will attach it with mattress stitching just as I did on this side and when I have done so I will get back to you with the next step. I have just finished my second button band and I have attached it with the same kind of stitches that I used on the other button band and um, when I attached it, I uh, I buttoned it first so that I then it would I it would be then it wa was easy for me to follow how it looked on both sides to make the pattern even. And uh, next step is to make the neck. And uh, it will be uh, knitted in rib as the button band. And um, I have placed the stitches on the button band on the same needle where I already have the stitches um, in the front for the neck opening. And I've done that on both, both sides. 
and when I I will first knit these and when I get here I will have to pick up new stitches and here in the back I have the rest of the stitches for the back piece so I will find my yarn just find some place to attach it so that I'm able to work with it and put some tension on it without without losing it and uh, I will also change back to the same needle size that I used when I made the ribbing on the jacket itself so I will just begin to knit and I will follow the ribbing and um, just so I sometimes find it a little bit tricky to do the first stitch when I begin with new yarn that is not attached to the work itself yet. So I follow the ribbing and I knit over knit stitches and purl over purl stitches like this. Now I can let go of this yarn end. Now my yarn is attached. And um, I will just keep going and knit the ribbing until I run out of stitches on this needle. When I get here you can see this gap. This is because I haven't really finished uh, attaching the button band and I haven't attached the yarn end that I used for that yet. And that is because I wanted to see how, um, how the button band and the jacket joined before, b before doing so because then I can more easily see where to place my needle and close the gap properly. So here, this is on the front piece of the jacket and just uh, I need to remember to keep going with my rib And uh, I have just a few stitches left. Like this. And when I get to this point, I have no stitches. So, I just begin to pick up stitches that I think would naturally follow to make a nice neck opening. For instance, this one is right to the side here. So I think I will choose this and I just knit like this. And and now it's difficult to knit and purl, so I will just knit all these stitches. And uh, I will begin to knit the ribbing in this part in the next round. So I just try to keep the stitch number that I would get if I was knitting. If I <clears throat> make too few stitches here, uh, the neck opening will be pulled together and will become smaller. And if I make too many, it would bend to the other side or curl to the other side. So I'll just continue like this. You can see what it looks like so far. And 
when I get here. Of course I can continue with the knit and purl and I will pick up stitches like this on this side and I will knit ribbing here. And if when on the next round when I will knit ribbing throughout the whole round if I when I start here and I continue to knit ribbing here and if I arrive here and there are two knit stitches or two purl stitches in a row so that the rib doesn't match I would just knit two stitches together or make one stitch just to adjust that so I will continue now to pick up stitches and uh, and I will get back to you when I am on the next round just to show you that. I have now finished my first row uh, here. Then I have turned back and continued to knit ribbing both on the front piece here and all the stitches that I picked up before. I have now continued the ribbing here and now I am about to begin to knit the stitches that were on the back piece on the circular needle uh, that I showed you before. And here I begun my ribbing with knit purl um, on the last row and I I'm now in the situation I mentioned where I have a purl stitch here and I have a purl stitch there. So two purl stitches in a row and I don't want that because it would make my ribbing look uneven if I suddenly had two rows with the same stitch. So well, I, I could do two things. I could knit the two stitches together like this to make one stitch. It's just like knitting or purling a normal stitch, only you pick up two stitches instead of one. And um, that is one alternative. What I will do is to pick up the yarn from this stitch and I will make one more the same way I increased on the sleeves and now I can continue to knit the ribbing and you can see here that no gap so I will continue now to go back and forward until my ribbing has the length that I am looking for and when it has I will get back to you on how to finish. Now my neck is finished and next step is to cast off. So what I do is to I continue to slip the first stitch and then I just follow I follow my ribbing so I knit over knit stitches and I purl over purl stitches and when I have two stitches on my right needle I take the first stitch and I slip it over the second and off my needle. Next stitch I purl and I take the stitch to the right here and I slip it over the one I, I knitted last and off the needle and I continue like this throughout the row and I make sure I do not cast off too tight as you can see I, I keep my stitches quite loose here and that is because I want some elasticity to the edge where I cast off
like this. So now I will continue until I have finished casting off and then I will get back to you with the next and last step. Now I have finished the neck and the cast off and I have begun to attach the neck. I have folded it double and I make sure that I fold it over this edge here where I picked up the stitches before. You can see the stitches go along here and I can also use those stitches here when I stitch and I just make sure that my I don't stitch on this side leaving this out in the open. I want to cover this and another thing that I want to check every now and then is that I follow the same stitch when I fold. Here I have the top of the column and here it's here's the bottom and when I fold that I it is straight so that I don't pull the stitch sideways like this. So now I will continue to attach the neck like this and when I am finished I will take this lining I will trim off some of the longest yarn ends here and my cutting edge for the button band and I will fold over like this and this will be attached in the same way that I did around the sleeves. So now I will just finish this and then the jacket will be ready and this is what the neck will look like from the right side. And you can see here the seamless transition from the button, button band and to the neck. I really hope this was useful for you and thank you for watching.